Hello again and welcome to another edition of Southern Country. Hi, I'm Herb Seth and welcome to the show, my friends. We're in Toms River, New Jersey today at Trix Rods and Racers. Ted is here and Ted engineers unusual projects such as the ones you can see around us. And Ted, welcome to the show, my friend. Hi, how are we doing there Good. today? Good, nice to see you. Tell us some of the unusual projects that you've built and what we're going to see in today's show. Well, we have our latest project right here is our racing bar stool. And what we've done is we've designed something that you can run it indoors and race to your favorite bar spot. <laughs> okay. Over to my right right here, we have a Battle Rat, one of the top-ranked battle bots that you've seen on Comedy Central on uh, television. This one has killed a lot of other robots. <laughs> we've done everything else from the Batmobile that you've seen on television. We've done parade floats that you've seen on um, at the Macy's Day Parade, all electric powered. Which we're later we're going to do is we're going to show you how our custom paint is done in the custom paint department and some of our fabrication facilities that you'll see inside in a little bit. And we're going to see how this how these work, right? Oh yes, we will. Well, we're inside the shop and there's something unusual in here. It's a jack for a motorcycle. Ted, tell us about this jack, how you designed it, and the purpose of it. What we've done is we've taken your basic $100 jack that anybody can buy in any store, and we've adapted some different plates here so that somebody with a disability with one arm over here, he loves to ride motorcycles, and he's not going to stop, and he likes to ride, and he likes to work on his own bikes. So what we've done is we've designed a jack that he can use with one arm. Well, Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, demonstrate how this is going to work now so we can pick the motorcycle up. Sure, I can just do it by myself, just come over here and just start lifting the bike up and then the bike will fall right into its own spot. That's amazing. Look at this. And I just keep going up with it and I go up as high as I want with it. And this gives you the capability of laying underneath and working Doing on it. Doing anything I need to do. Anything you need. Cleaning the bike, polishing it up, anything like that. Now, okay. Now, set it back down. I want to see this worked up and down. What goes up come, must come down, as they say. Yep. Just go, like, go down Watch nice this. and slow. Touches, the bike just leans back right on back, the kickstand. Falls right back over. Amazing. And that was designed by, you, you engineered it? Uh, yes, we did. It took a long time to really come up with something that worked every single time without any problem of it falling over. Well, it's one of a kind, Tom? Yes, it is. Okay. That's unusual. It's down here. Ted redesigned it. Tom is using it. Well, Ted, we're standing next to Battle Rat 2002. Um, tell us how, more about this. I don't even know what it is. Oh, this right here is one of our most favorite projects. I just love to break stuff. As much as I love to build things, this is so much fun. Going against engineers from all over the world, well, this is a battle bot. This is one of the top-ranked BattleBots in BattleBot history of killing other robots. What we've done here, we've taken aluminum on the top, we've taken the fronts and made it out of chrome molly steel so the other guys with their saws can't get through us. What we do is we have two controllers all digitally programmed. It takes two people to run this. Uh, one person runs the marm and one person drives it. What I've done is I've hired a guy that's one of the best people in the world for radio controlled cars. So he makes sure that we're always pointed towards our opponent. Let me show you inside the battle bot. What it is, this has a 360 degree lifting arm. This is, this ally right here, the 7075 material is almost unbendable. Chrome molly in the top. And we used a gear ratio right here, so it's 30 to one. It basically has enough capability of flipping an a normal 200 pound person, eh, six, eight feet in the air. We've actually taken a race car tire and flipped it through our ceiling so we know it works really well. Uh, this right here is ranked in the top 25 in all competition worldwide. That's quite a piece of equipment. How long did it take you to design that thing? Uh, we had about six to eight months in design and engineering. Uh, we did a lot of testing and made sure it didn't fail. Of all the fights we've ever been in, we've never had a failure with the battle <laughs> That's bot. That's quite a record, huh? How many fights have you been in? Just, num just, rec just curious. Uh, probably around 15 fights, okay. and we have probably around 11 wins. There you go. I was going to ask you how many times you won. All right. Well, we have a very unusual motorcycle here. It took three people to, to make this motorcycle as it is. It took a tin designer, it took a fabricator, and it took an artist. Right. Now, let Ted... Tell us what you did on this as a beginning. You were the beginning man, right, Ted? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, Charlie gave me the concept here. And what I had to do is hand form all of the metal to make sure all the beginning and ending points on a motorcycle was strong enough 
to take the vibration of a high-powered motorcycle. What did Charlie do? Uh, I came up with the design. Uh, we call it the Dragon Slayer. It's a medieval theme. Um, I went to Ted because the back fender, which is a combination of both metal and a high-density foam, which Joe uh, installed, uh, gave it an effect of uh, an armor plating, and it's actually flat on one side and 3D on the top. What are the unusual parts of this motorcycle you, that showed, like the signals and the, what else? Well, what we did is uh, it's a chopper motorcycle with 10-inch over forks. We have a dragon head made of high-density foam that Joe carved with a Dremel. The fender, tank, and rear fender have all high-density foam, also giving me a 3D effect. Chain mail on the oil tank, uh, medieval daggers mounted to the front of the uh, uh, motor mounts, and in the rear fenders we have mace balls with chains that are actually the running lights and blinkers. Joe, yes. what was your deal? Pretty much doing the carving and the dimensional sculpture of the high-density foam. This foam here is in the sign industry, which actually I put a patent process on of using the foam into the automotive industry to mounting it to the surface with the uh, two-part epoxy system. So at first we take actually a raw material and then create it into a hand-carved piece with a Dremel tool. This is, this is foam? This is actually the foam, yes. This is a high-density foam, which is then put in, actually we've done it in two pieces, mounted together, and then mounted to the frame. And then uh, from there, the follow-through of, uh, of the carving and then the painting of the airbrushing. So my type of style is going from three-dimensional to flat airbrush. Uh, just before we go to a video, how many hours of labor went into this piece of equipment? Anybody? It was 400 hours in total. 400 yeah. hours? I had 80 hours of uh, sheet metal alone. You guys got to love what you do. Yes, we do. <laughs> it's out of love, trust me. Thank you. <laughs> this is incredible. This is really incredible. Thanks, guys. Okay, my friends, I'm with Joe here, who designs the custom paintwork for all the projects here. Joe, tell us a little bit more about how you go about this and et cetera and et cetera. Okay. Well, what we do first of all is uh, start out with a custom sketch and design for the customer. And then we go into uh, talking about what style of bike they have and what type of uh, flame work or whatever type of artwork they want to put on it. Then we go into the production stage, which is laying out flames and lines from the sketch that we had originally designed. And then we go off into the custom painting using either the airbrush or the spray gun and go into the final clear coat, wet sanding and buffing and refinishing. The finished uh, product is right behind right, us. Which is right behind us and uh, comes out really nice when you take a lot, a lot of time. How many hours, how many hours of work does it take from the beginning to the finished product? Would Usually you say? most products would take between 100 to 200 hours on most of our type of jobs that we do. Get out. Just for the, the, for the paintbrush, the, just basically yeah, painting. Basically painting, yeah. Once you take apart all the parts that you have to take apart, right. prep the surface, and then go into the artwork, and then the refinishing time, you, and you combine it all together from and, start to finish, you'll at least have 100 hours minimum on most bike jobs, whether it be a truck, car, or bike. You do good work here. Thank you very much. Well, my friends, it's time to wrap up this edition of Southern Country. You saw some unusual items on this show and thanks to ted thank you very much for making those unusual items possible hey thanks a lot guys i had a lot of fun doing it today it was really a lot of you fun. got some real toys huh it's great being the, the world's <laughs> oldest 10 year old isn't it <laughs> tommy thank you very much thank you very much i think we're going well, let's go for lunch tommy That's all right, right let's go guys let's belly up